Symbols of the underground riches in the world-famous Sudbury Mining Basin are the 500-foot stacks of the Copper Cliff Smelters. Over 85,000 people inhabit the Sudbury District, dedicating their brain and muscle to the mining and refining of nickel and other base metals. $350 million worth every year. In March of 1953, the Canadian Curling Championships for the McDonald's Briar Tankard came to Northern Ontario for the first time in its 24 years of competition. The historic tankard itself, however, is not new to Northern Ontario. Three years before, in Vancouver, Tom Ramsey, a hard rock miner from Kirkland Lake, won the Canadian Championship for Northern Ontario. The brand new Sudbury Arena provided a $1,350,000 setting for the national championship to be contested by the provincial champions of Canada's 10 provinces. This was probably the toughest field in Briar history. Of the 44 competitors from coast to coast, 15 of them had played in the National Curling Championship before. Six had previously skipped rinks in the Briar. Grant Watson, this year skipping the Northern Ontario champions from Port Arthur, had played third stone for his famous brother Ken Watson of Winnipeg, who won the Briar a record-breaking three times. But, representing Manitoba in 1953, was a master curler from Dauphin, Manitoba, Ab Gowanlock. In 1938, Gowanlock won the Briar with nine straight victories. A 15-year lapse from national competition had not impaired Ab Gowanlock's touch on a curling stone. Once again, the chairman of the trustees of the McDonald's Briar Tankard, the Honorable Senator John T. Haig of Winnipeg, thanks Sudbury for its hospitality and, in the traditional manner, prepares to deliver the first stone. Despite the sweeping of David Stewart of the McDonald Tobacco Company and Tankard trustees, the Honorable Thane Campbell, Chief Justice of Prince Edward Island, and Ross Hearthstone of Hamilton, Senator Haig's stone is hogged. Each year, the Railbirds picked the Manitoba champions as the team to beat, and with good reason. Manitoba had won 13 of the previous 23 briars. The McDonald briar is a round-robin competition, each rink playing the other one once, and with one team representing each province and two from Ontario, one of the 11 rinks receives a bye every draw, and there are 11 draws. Fifty-two-year-old Ab Gowanlock was just the man to uphold Manitoba's curling reputation. He came to Sudbury with 41 years of curling behind him, the knowledge of what a curler has to have to win a national championship and a strong rink. Three all-important factors. Manitoba drew the Nova Scotia champions in the opening round. Curling fans speculated whether Barney Haynes from the Bridgewater Curling Club would come out of Nova Scotia with as great a rink as Don Euler of Kenville, who won the Briar in 1950 in 10 undefeated games. On the fifth end, Barney Haynes scored a three to square the match at four all. Manitoba, in the white sweaters and playing the Black Rocks, were trailing by one point playing the eighth end. Skip Gowanlock, lying one, needs good sweeping to draw his last rock to the front edge of the four-foot circle. Ralph Simmons, Nova Scotia's third, gives Barney Haynes the broom for the double takeout. But the stone is offline. Haynes gets one, but rolls out himself at Manitoba's Black Rock, counts one, and the match is tied again. In the ninth end, Gowanlock has a shot rock on the forefoot and intends to protect it with a guard.
The pressure is heavy on Barney Haynes of the Bridgewater Curling Club, and he needs a careful draw shot to win the end. Now how can you get closer to the button than that? Nova Scotia leads again 7 to 6. The black rock biting the two foot is Manitobas as the Nova Scotia skip Barney Haynes delivers his last rock on the 10th end with Nova Scotia leading 7 to 6. But his rock is light. That's an awful lot of broom Manitoba's third Ping Williams gives his skipper. Gowanlock isn't one to miss this opportunity. His draw shot is in there. Manitoba counts two, leads the match, and finally defeats Nova Scotia 8-7. to seven. A close shave. The Curling Club of Trail British Columbia and the Curling Club of St. John's Newfoundland are 3,718 air miles apart, but only one rock apart when Reg Stone of Trail, making his third appearance in the briar, played the tremendously popular ring from St. John's, skipped by Norman Rockwell, who was born in Nova Scotia, learned to curl in New Brunswick, and won the championship of Newfoundland in his first try. Now on the 12th end, with British Columbia leading 9-7, to seven, Rocky Rockwell's Newfoundland rink, wearing white sweaters and Balmorals, is playing the Black Rocks. Rocky holds the broom for his third, Lou Air. British Columbia lies two, and Air comes through with a perfect takeout to lie shot. Roy Stone holds the broom for his brother and skip, Reg Stone. The British Columbia skip playing a white rock just taps the shot rock and Newfoundland still lies one. Newfoundland lies one and skip Rocky Rockwell is two points down but his last rock on the last end. He tries a wick off a British Columbia stone, but doesn't tap the other BC rock hard enough, and British Columbia lies shot. A tough break, but curling is a game of inches and half inches. Red stone strategy is basic. Protect his shot rock with his last stone. Newfoundland has a great chance to pull a first-class upset for this British Columbia rink forced the great Ken Watson to the limit in the 1949 briar. Rockwell tries to tap out the BC rock and lie two for a tie and an extra end, but he rolls too far and takes only one point. British Columbia wins the match 9-8. to eight. It's a second straight victory for the stone rink. They beat Quebec 15-5 to five in the opening draw. Two fine maritime rinks got together in the fifth draw at Sudbury. The veteran Charlottetown curler, Frank Acorn, skipped the Prince Edward Island champions for the third time. And in this match, the Charlottetown Curling Club rink was opposed by the New Brunswick champions from the Beaver Curling Club in Moncton, skipped by Ralph Noble. When two down Easter rinks meet each other, you can always look forward to some clever draw curling. New Brunswick is playing the Black Rocks and wearing short gray sweaters. And here in the 12th end, Prince Edward Island is leading 8-7. to seven. Frank Acorn of Charlottetown can make his shot one of two ways. He elects to go for a knockout on the shot rock of New Brunswick. The house is almost wide open for Ralph Noble of Moncton. An easy draw shot with his last rock will give him one point and square the match.
13th end, skips rocks. A miss here can be fatal. Ralph Noble tries for a guard on his own shot rock, the black one. Noble's stone is too long, but it bites the two-foot circle, and New Brunswick lies too. With last rock, Frank Acorn decides to make his first rock a double takeout. And the Railbirds, as is their constitutional right, second guess the Charlottetown skip. Acorn rolls off the New Brunswick stone, but goes out of the house, and New Brunswick has the shot rock. The Black Rocks are New Brunswick's, and Ralph Noble has the situation in hand. He wants a guard just in front of his shot rock. Good sweeping pulls the New Brunswick rock right to the two-foot circle, and the Moncton curlers lied too. This is the kind of a clutch shot that makes curling one of the most exacting of all games. Frank Acorn needs a double takeout and has to stay in himself to win the match. He misses and New Brunswick defeats Prince Edward Island 10 to 8. The province of Alberta has the next best record to that of Manitoba in the McDonald's Briar. And when the sixth draw rolled around, the Len Haw ring from the Glencoe Curling Club in Calgary had won four straight matches and lost one. Its fifth draw match against Ontario. That was good enough for second place heading into the final half of the championship. Representing the province of Quebec for the second straight year was the rink of youthful Kenny Weldon of the St. George Curling Club in Montreal, which had finished with a rush at the Briar in Winnipeg the year before. Once again, Ken Weldon got away to a slow start, and in this match against Alberta, the Quebec rink, playing the White Stones and wearing the striped peak caps, are one down to Alberta, five to four, playing the eighth end. Jess McCants holds the broom with Quebec lying shot at the back of the house. This is Ken Weldon's last rock in the end. He has a simple draw shot to make to count two and take the lead six to five. On the next end, Quebec counted two more to make it eight to five. Now on the 10th, Alberta has three rocks in the house as Ken Weldon plays his first stone. In trying for the shot rock, Weldon hits his own guard. Freddie Agnew, Alberta's third, holds the broom. Skip Len Haw wants to lay down a guard. Now Alberta lies four, and this is the last stone of Quebec's Kenny Weldon. It's a double takeout, and Weldon's rock is shot. It's wide open for the veteran Len Haw. He seldom misses a shot of this kind. A simple knockout is required. Red Haggerty and Tim Miller give Alberta some real sweeping. Len Haw counts two to cut Quebec's lead to one. But Quebec scores a two on the 11th end and wins the match 10 to eight. <laughs> Russ Jackman, lead of the Manitoba champions from the Dauphin Curling Club, plays his first rock in the first full end ever shown in any Briar movie. This is the first stone of Jim Turney, Quebec's lead. At this point in the Briar, Manitoba's rink was unbeaten with six victories and no losses. And Quebec was in second place with four victories and one defeat by British Columbia in the very first draw. Russ Jackman, only 24 years old, is by far the youngest member of this Manitoba rink. It's the ninth end with a score in a five-all tie. Ken Weldon gives Jim Turney the broom. Turney is a Welshman by birth and has been curling competitively only four years. 
both Quebec rocks roll out and Manitoba is shot. Ab Gowanlock lying two calls for a guard from Manitoba second Bill Pollen. It's a perfect guard and Manitoba lies three. Bill Isaac, Quebec second stone, was Calgary born but learned to curl in Kitchener under the tutelage of Art Lennon, who played in the Briar three times with a famous hall rink from Kitchener. Bill Pollen of Dauphin is just going to replace that black Manitoba guard. Weldon wants Bill Isaac to get rid of those two Manitoba rocks in front. You can almost hear Gowan Locke's instructions. Get it out of there, Bill. Jess McCants, former Winnipeg Blue Bomber and Montreal Alouette all-round football player, Quebec's third. Ab Gowanlock and his third, Ping Williams, go to work on that white Quebec rock up front. McCants draws a bead on the shot rock. Ab Gowanlock aims to put a guard in front of the black Manitoba rock. Ab is a trifle heavy. Ken Weldon goes for a double takeout, making sure to stay in himself. Remember that the match is tied five all on this ninth end. And here is Ab Gowanlock's last rock. House wide open, a great chance for Ken Weldon to move in for two points and take the lead in the match seven to five. On the 10th end, Ab Gowanlock used his last rock to pull within a point of the lead. And now on the 11th end with Manitoba lying two, Gowanlock is intent on placing a guard in front of the house. This calls for a high-level strategy conference. The Black Rocks are Manitobas. The Quebec boys know there are two sides to every problem. Weldon was after the shot rock, hoping his own stone would stay in. Gowanlock lies one. He's one point down in the match, and this is his last rock on the 11th end. Weldon has to play this one carefully. He and Chess McCann's had a special incentive to send the unbeaten Manitoba rink down to defeat. Both are former Winnipeggers. Weldon rolls out and Manitoba scores one to tie the score at seven all. Skips rocks to be played and the Montreal rink lies shot after McCann's pulled off a great shot and Manitoba's third Ping Williams missed his takeout. Gowanlock battling to remain undefeated pulls in against the white Quebec rock. Fractions of inches often are the difference between winning and losing. And with a chance to tie for first place, Weldon draws in like a master. In curling, even the best of them miss the pressure shots now and again. Ab Gowanlock's last rock hits a front guard. Gowanlock doesn't wait for an official measure. He concedes the match to Quebec, and Weldon is not required to play his last rock. Final score, eight to seven for Quebec. The first time Gowanlock has been beaten in 15 Briar matches. The rink from the Chatham Curling Club, Ontario champions for the second time in five years, was skipped by the oldest curler in the briar, 73-year-old Pete Gilbert. Although he is skipped,
Pete Gilbert throws lead rocks, and one of his sons, Gordon, throws fourth rocks, and another son, Bob, is the third. Jim Harrington is the second stone on the Gilbert rink. Thursday is always a rugged day in Briar competition. Three draws, and here on the sixth end in a match between Ontario and the Black Sweaters, and the Ralph Noble rink of the Beaver Curling Club at Moncton, New Brunswick, the Maritime rink builds up a big end with the White Stones and counts a four to lead the match five to four. Horace Trites of New Brunswick holds the broom with the Moncton rink lying three. Ralph Noble, the skip, plays his last rock and draws to the front of the house to lie four. Pete Gilbert asks his son Gord, throwing fourth rocks, for a stone up against the New Brunswick rock at the back of the house. Gord Gilbert makes it, and Ontario goes on to defeat New Brunswick eight to seven. By the ninth draw, Manitoba had won seven games and lost one, and Quebec had won six and lost one. But against the Grant Watson rink from the Port Arthur Curling Club, Ab Gowanlock ran into real trouble. Grant Watson curled brilliantly to score a four-ender and a three-ender against Manitoba. Five points down, Gowanlock rallied for two points on the seventh end. By the twelfth end, Northern Ontario's fine rink was three points ahead, and Grant Watson comes through with a wonderful takeout shot. Watson had Archie Grant playing lead, Frank Sargent second, and Don McEwen third stone. Northern Ontario lies two and facing certain defeat, Gowanlock tries for a difficult double takeout. Gowanlock misses and the Northern Ontario champions defeat Manitoba 14 to nine. A great victory for Grant Watson's rink and Quebec's victory over New Brunswick in the same draw sends the Ken Weldon rink into the lead. When the 11th and final draw rolled around, Kenny Weldon's Quebec champions were one victory away from the national championship. While Manitoba drew a bye in the last draw, Quebec needed only to defeat the Saskatchewan champion, skipped by Jimmy Hill from the Delisle Curling Club. But Jimmy Hill figured to make it tough. From the beginning of the British Consul's district eliminations, the Delisle rink came to Sudbury with an amazing record of 31 straight games without defeat. Saskatchewan then won its first two matches in the Briar, but ran into tough luck and were spoiling for revenge. Playing the fifth end, Quebec with the Blackstones were leading three to one. Saskatchewan is lying three as Weldon delivers his last rock. Weldon takes out the shot rock. Saskatchewan lies two and this is Jimmy Hill's chance to move in. With a long graceful slide, Hill shows perfect form in delivery. Coordinated sweeping brings the rock to the two foot. Saskatchewan counts three, takes the lead in the match and is never headed again. Saskatchewan was leading Quebec 7-3, playing the ninth end. The Quebec champions, trying too hard to win the Briar without a playoff, were badly off form. Skip Jimmy Hill's rock, leaves Saskatchewan lying three. Weldon's first stone gives him the obvious choice of a knockout shot. Weldon makes it, but Saskatchewan's white rock is still shot. A draw shot in behind that Quebec guard is the shot. Hill's shot is a little light. Quebec is four points down, and Weldon has a chance to slice the margin in half with his last rock. This one needs help. The shot rock is moved, but not enough, and Quebec only counts one. Curling in the form that made his Delisle rink the most feared in Saskatchewan, Jimmy Hill went on to win the match nine to five.
so this was it. Sudden death for the national championship. Each team had won eight and lost two. In the regular draw, Ken Weldon of Montreal St. George had won everything except his first and last matches against British Columbia and Saskatchewan. Ab Gowanlock of the Dauphin Curling Club had been beaten by Quebec 8-7 and by Northern Ontario, both on the same day. Skips Rocks on the eighth end. Manitoba leading 5-2. Quebec's Whitestone is shot on the forefoot. Ab Gowanlock gets a piece of Quebec shot rock, rolls out himself, but Manitoba is now shot. After a consultation, Kenny Weldon decides on a cold-blooded draw shot up against the black Manitoba stone. And that, Mr. Weldon, was just about perfect. Quebec lies too. Ab Gowanlock is in deep trouble and knows it. He'd like to move both Quebec stones at the back of the house. Manitoba has the shot rock, but another perfect shot will make a big end for Quebec and tie the score. With the match tied playing the ninth end, Manitoba lying three, Ken Weldon makes a superb shot through a double port. Now, Ab Gowanlock faces the necessity of making an even better shot. The port is closed up, so Weldon wants a wick off the black Manitoba rock at the far side of the house. Ab Gowanlock needs to raise one of his own rocks on the Quebec's shot rock. After a good long look, but foregoing an accurate measure, they decide that Quebec only counts one, and the Montrealers go ahead six to five. Scoring a point on the 10th and 11th ends, Ab Gowanlock leads the playoff 7 to 6 and plays his first rock on the 12th end with Quebec shot. He got it out of there and Ken Weldon is faced with an important shot. Both rocks roll out and the best Weldon can now get is a tie. It looks easy, but in curling, if all the shots were made, it wouldn't be much of a game. The gentleman in the spats, Ab Gowanlock, would like to get this rock in front of the tee line, but close to the button. Well, there it is. Weldon takes a close look at the stone he has to beat to tie the match and send the playoffs to an extra end. Bill Isaac and Jim Turney get ready to bring it along. But wait, it's going to be heavy. The Quebec Rock slides by. Manitoba wins the playoff 8-6 to six and wins the McDonald's Briar Tankard for the 14th time in 24 years. Ab Gowanlock has triumphed again after 15 years. The Quebec champions are crestfallen, but their superlative play throughout the week could mean that next year is their year. And here stands the McDonald's Briar Tankard, beautiful emblem of Canada's only truly national sports championship. For the Canadian Curling Championships, embrace each of our ten great provinces. David M. Stewart of the McDonald Tobacco Company congratulates the winners. Had this competition, and this will be the 14th that it's gone back to the province of Manitoba. I think it's the first time to go from it. But even though it's a habit now to give it to Manitoba, I'm very, very proud. And Ab, you did a very fine job. You had to curl all the way. And Quebec made it hard for you, which is my home province, and I'm proud of them. 
but I'm sincerely proud for the 14th time to give it to you people from Manitoba. This is the biggest moment in the life of any curler. Ab Gowan locked the skip. Russ Jackman the lead. Bill Pollen, Manitoba second. And Ping Williams the third. Perhaps this picture appeared in the sports pages of your own newspaper. From the Honorable Thane Campbell, a tankard trustee, each member of the championship rink from Dauphin receives a trophy of his own. A beautiful silver tray inscribed with the details of this curling victory. Twice a national champion, Ab Gowanlock. I don't think there's much that I can say, but uh, we've got a wonderful lot of support while we're here. We've had a lot of good games, and we've been awful lucky in winning this tournament. Thank you. To Kenny Weldon of Quebec, Dan Jessup, the mayor of Sudbury, presents the runners-up prizes, and to Chess McCants, to Bill Isaac, and Jim Turney, and now the Quebec skip, Ken Weldon. We've had a real tough week. We tried our best to bring the <coughs> McDonald Briar Trophy back to the province of Quebec for the first time, but the best team won tonight. Thank you. By every yardstick, this was the best of all Briars. Best competition, best curling. All this and the friendly hospitality of Sudbury, too.